Credit Keys is known for making the best budget keyboards, but with all the new innovations and competition in the market, have they managed to deliver something worth buying with the QK100? Let's build one for ourselves and find out. Now when the QK100 was up for sale, you also had the option of purchasing the QK1 switches and QK keycaps for $70, which was a fantastic deal if they were any good. So I bought them to find out. This here is the QK1 switch. The keycaps are double shot PBT and have extensive layout support, but for some reason it doesn't come with a function key that fits in the keys that they use for functions, so I'm using a control key instead. And if you're wondering why I bought the brown ones, well, I don't know either, but they're starting to grow on me, so it's all good. Unfortunately, these keycaps aren't perfect. For example, the S on this backspace is too thin, but most of the other keys don't have any issues, and most people probably wouldn't notice anyways. If you were to ask me if I'd buy them again, the answer would probably be yes. Especially if they are as cheap as they are when they come with the switches, which are quite good. As for the keyboard itself, it comes with a switch puller, a keycap puller, a screwdriver, and coiled USB-C cable, which unfortunately doesn't seem to be color matched. The keyboard arrives in a lovely carrying case, along with everything you need to build it, like the Owl Stabs 2.0, which I am quite fond of, as I've said before. The rubber feet, gaskets, and screws, a wireless dongle if you got the tri-mode PCB, an extra ribbon cable for the LCD, and the plate of your choice. I bought both the carbon fiber plate because that's new to the QK lineup, and the FR4 plate because that seems to be the safe choice in terms of both flexibility and sound. You get all the standard foams of course with your PCB, and it's up to you whether or not you choose to use them. I will for the first sound test. And for the first time, your PCB can be had with no flex cuts whatsoever. And I decided to do that to see if it would feel significantly different from my QK80, which does have flex cuts. The case itself is quite beautifully finished, with no defects as far as I can see, and it comes with your choice of weights, though I've gone with a plain one because the non-anodized aluminums were quite expensive. As you can hear, this case is quite dead inside, just like me, there is no pinging whatsoever. To apply the rubber feet on the keyboard, we just peel them off and stick them in the cutouts on the back. And to take the thing apart, we simply unscrew the 8 screws with a H1.5 bit. And here's another aluminum plate that hides your batteries, there is no need to take it apart. Once you've got your PCB and plate assembled, it's time to choose your mounting method. I've never enjoyed a top-mounted keyboard, so we'll be sticking with gasket socks for this build. But that's what the screws are there for if you do want to top-mount it. As for the gaskets, they aren't symmetrical and you can choose an orientation based on how firm you want them to be, so make sure you're paying attention when you're applying these and that you have them facing the correct direction. With that done, it's time to put the whole keyboard back together. You're going to want to put the top and the bottom case quite close together for this next step. The daughter board connection is quite simple, it's just a JST cable. But to connect the LCD to the motherboard, you need to lift the PCB up slightly and route the ribbon cable around so that it goes through the hole in the PCB and then connect it in the ribbon cable connector slot. Most people don't like ribbon cables very much, and neither do I because I work with them quite often at work, and I know that they break quite easily. But this is how this keyboard is assembled. It's a good thing that QWERTY keys includes an extra ribbon cable with your purchase just in case you break yours. I find that it's easier to close the case like this, that way the ribbon cable doesn't fall on the other side of the PCB and interfere with the switches and makes it impossible to close. After that, we just screw the whole thing back together. Let's see how this sounds. This is with the FR4 plate and all foams.
I think that sounds quite nice, but before we get into the sound test with the carbon fiber plates and no foams, let's talk about this LCD. It does more than just show you the date and the time, it can also play this GIF that QWERTY keys uploaded. You can upload your own custom GIFs, like the bongo cat or an anime girl I suppose. Or you can even upload your own custom message for your viewers to see. For- wait, what is this? It wants you to like and subscribe? Like and comment and subscribe. I mean, the keyboard wants you to do it, not me, so you have to. 